Hi everyone, welcome to Matt's Garage Home Edition. Today we're building a koi pond filter. Why do you ask? Well, because the filter that's on the koi pond is just not good enough. All the previous owner left was a little barrel filled with some plastic chunks for a biological filter and a UV filter outside of that. And it's just not keeping the pond clean. So, I'm going to make a mechanical filter and a larger biological filter. We start off with a pickling drum I got for free from my friend Steve. A whole bunch of fittings. Uh, another tub that's just, I was going to throw it away, I'll use that as a mechanical filter. Some one inch piping and a 1200 gallon per hour pump. I measured the pump that's on there and it's around 60 gallons per hour. So this is going to provide an amazing amount of, of water movement should oxygen, oxygenate the water better, move the nitrates out, and uh, make for a much better filter. There's a lot of information about koi ponds on the internet. Um, and there's a lot of information about koi pond filters on the internet. But I just couldn't find one source that showed how to make a simple filter yourself. So that's what I'm going to do today, and I'm going to explain the concept, and I'm going to go ahead and make it. So. I have three kinds of filters in the system I'm planning. A mechanical filter, a biological filter, and the UV filter that's out there. These could be in any type of vessel, okay? I'm using a pickling drum because it was free, first of all, and because it gives me enough room to fill it up with the media I need and plumbing and all that stuff. You could use a smaller one, but just working in there and getting all the plumbing done might be a little more difficult, but it would be much easier to hide. So. Let me explain how a mechanical filter works. It's very simple. It uses physical things to clean the water. And in our case, we're going to use gravel, crushed gravel, pea gravel, and chicken grit granite. Okay, so basically a rough stone, about half that size stone, stone the size of a pea, and then sand, but like coarse sand that won't just wash away when I backwash it, which I'll explain later. So on the bottom layer is going to be a void. I'm going to cut this lid, I'm going to drop it in here and make like a, a spacer. So there's nothing in there but the pipes that bring the water into the barrel. Then I'm going to have a layer of gravel, a layer of crushed gravel, a layer of pea gravel, a layer of chicken grit sand, and then up here is just going to be open and I'll explain why. A biological filter doesn't use physical, well I mean I technically I guess they're physical things, but you can't see them. You're using bacteria to filter out the nitrates from your koi's poo poo, okay? So what you do is you fill this up with things that have a lot of surface area, scraggly things, scratchy things. You can use uh, like scrubbing sponges, like Scotch-Brite sponges, a little plastic ball. They make bio balls, but it's just something that has a lot of turns and nooks and crannies. Things with nooks and crannies that won't break down in the water. So plastic is good. Um, and that's even simpler in the sense that you just fill it up with that stuff. Again, you put a void in the bottom for the kind of muck to settle in. You bring a pipe in fills up with water and then it goes out to your UV filter and uh, I'm using this tub because it's a good amount of room it's much bigger than the one that's on there now and uh, I can kind of put it in front of the tub and, and make that work or in front of the uh, barrel and make that work for my plumbing I chose a 1200 gallon per hour pump mag drive because it, you know it won't it won't burn out it'll use less energy uh, I picked 1200. My pump, my pond's around somewhere between 900 and 1100, so I pick one a little bigger, so it turns over the whole pond once an hour, more than once an hour. Uh, this was the hardest part, doing the calculation. You know, you got to figure average depth, not just the total depth, because you'll 
get a pump that's way too big. You don't want too big of a pump because then you got to slow it down so you don't overwhelm it. And then if you get a big pump, you got a lot bigger pipes and all that stuff. And I wanted to keep it to like the inch, inch and a quarter range for all my piping. Because once you get above inch and a half or two inch, it starts getting very, very expensive. All right, let's talk plumbing. So in this big one, you're going to need three bulkhead connectors, okay? And I'll explain why. Water comes in and out of this thing four ways. You only need three connectors because the main pipe that's bringing the water in from the pump, this lid isn't going to be on. It's going to be an open container. It's just going to 90 down and go to the bottom into that void inside, okay? So that doesn't need a bulkhead um, connector. But... You might need a drain. Now the drain doesn't have to be as big as all the other piping. This is a three quarter inch because first of all, you hardly ever drain the, this thing from the bottom. Hardly ever. Um, probably never actually. I mean, it's kind of a waste of money, but knowing my luck, if I didn't put it in, something would happen and I'd have to move it and then I'd have to drain it. Because once you put all the gravel in here, even with the water drain, it's never gonna move. I don't even know why I'm putting it in. I'm gonna do it anyway, okay? But you put a drain in at the bottom. All right, and then you put a valve on it, you know, and put the valve pointing to a, your garden or somewhere where you don't mind getting kind of mucky water on it, and that's it. It stays closed forever until you need to drain the tub. You put a very similar one. No, no, let's go to the outlet. We talked about the inlet of the water, so one inch pipe. Uh, we talked about the bottom, the drain out of the bottom of the uh, the uh, barrel here okay then I'm gonna have an outlet okay and that's gonna be say here pretty high all right and that's gonna take the water to the mechanical filter all right and it's gravity fed all right so once once you put that in there that just carries the water through and it's pretty simple below that somewhere I'm gonna have another uh, drain again pointing to a garden or something I don't mind having be dirty and the purpose of this is for backwashing. What is backwashing? Well, with any filter like this, you gotta clean the muck that gets caught in all those layers of rock out. How do you do that? You do that with air. So, when I, before I start putting in my gravel, and I'll show you, just above the, the spacer, I'm gonna have a set of pipes in there with a pipe coming up right next to my inlet pipe that I can take air blow it in there, it'll go down and into the fingers, which I'll drill little holes in, and it'll bubble up that crud up to the top. I need a way of getting rid of it without it going to my mechanical filter, so that's why it's lower. I open that up, dumps the crud into my garden, and uh, that back washes my filter. By the way, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I learned all of this on the internet. I mean, I'm mechanically good, but this is all new to me, and I, I don't even know if it's going to work. But we'll find out. That's the fun of Matt's Garage. Okay, first hiccup. Usually find them right away, and then they continue to come up during the whole project. But this is not like a single layer lid like I'm used to on a normal drum. This is like a double layer, because this was I think because it was a pickling drum. But that's a good thing, it's just a little harder to cut out. So, so for my spacer, I'm going to cut here and cut all around and just use the bottom portion of this lid as my spacer. The nice part is, I can just drill some holes in the top part and have a lid. That'll keep the leaves and stuff out. I was only going to leave it open top because, well, you know, I didn't have a lid. I was going to use a lid for the bottom. But since it's basically two lids, I'm going to cut it in half, you know. I'll make it work. Yes, I am humming Duran Duran in an Eric Carmen voice. Is that okay with you guys? So, 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 so. Well, the nice thing about this is no metal shavings, unlike all the other stuff. If I just...
Like I said, we're good at mechanical stuff. It, oh. oh, that's cool. Ta-da! So this is going to be my spacer. Okay, let's test fit the bottom of our lid here that we just cut out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me glove. Perfect. You see the cross in the middle, that's going to be the sort of structure. And then I'm going to have pipe come in here, four corners. One, one of them uh, is actually not going to be a 90, it's going to be a T. Bringing my inlet pipe down. So I'm just going to mock this up, take some measurements, and start cutting. Okay, always protect your ears, your hands, and your eyes. Your mouth, you don't need so much, but everything else you kind of need. Okay, so now you can see what this is all going to look like. Okay, you can see there I drilled little holes on the side, go all the way through, just to give water a place to go. Don't need to be very big because there's eight of them, and you only have a one inch pipe coming in, so that's plenty. This is glued together. Now I'm going to put this in and measure my uh, my intake. Okay, and there you have it. That's what the intake section looks like, basically. I'm just going to take that, drop it in. That's going to sit on the bottom. I'm going to figure out a way to bolt this down so there's no stress on this pipe. Black. So the next step is I'm going to cut a notch, a one inch notch. Uh, into this and then another three-quarter inch notch for the air cleaner riser and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to drill a whole bunch of holes in here and that's to let the water leach up through the gravel. I'm going to lower this into place and that's going to be the platform on which I'm going to build my fingers for my air cleaning manifold. Yeah, just real quick, I zip tied a piece of one and a quarter inch PVC under this joint because I'm afraid of the gravel pushing down on it, and this will give it some support just in case. Okay, where are we at? I took the barrel out to the backyard and I mocked it up into place. I found a good spot for it nestled between trees so it'll give us some natural camo. Um, Nandita, that's Mrs. Matt's garage, uh, she wants to gel stain this brown like we did the koi pond cover, which you can see the video for here or here. I'm not sure where. Either here or here. And um, Anyway, but before that I need to get all the outlets and inlets and all that. So the inlet's here, this is the inlet pipe. I'm not drilling anything, I just marked it so I could clock everything. This is gonna be my outlet that goes down to my mechanical filter. And then here is my backwash drain and my bottom drain, okay? So I'm gonna cut holes in and start getting the bulkhead connectors fitted in there. So good hole saw kit from Harbor Freight comes with a bunch of different sizes. You can see this doesn't even fit so it's like that's a really good size for this uh, it's slightly bigger than the threads barely so it'll slide in tight not too tight and then the, the gaskets would actually seals the water out so let me just uh, make sure I could get it in there yeah it looks like I can so I'm gonna go a little higher than the D just to make sure. Okay. That's out. So then lift this back up, take this 
sticker off. Should pop in. Okay, and that is your bulkhead connector. Okay, that's pretty much what it looks like. That's what all the drains will look like when they're done. This one will be the same. It's, uh, open, closed. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to go test it out to see if it leaks. Okay, forgive the background noise, but basically I made this manifold that I now lower on top of my spacer plate. And that's going to be what blows air up and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with water and test it before I load uh, the rock in there. And then it's too late. Okay, so now that I've got it filled with water, I'm going to take compressed air, put it into here and just test how vigorous it is. That looks pretty good. Uh, I got some dead spots over here. I'm gonna drill some more holes in that direction. And some dead spots over here. And then uh, that looks, that's the kind of bubbling action you want out of this thing. This is Mrs. Matt's garage camouflaging the filters to look more like trees. You're doing a great job, babe. Thank you. You don't wanna show your face to the camera? Not really. Okay, there is its final resting place for the mechanical filter, and we'll put the um, biological filter in front of it on those cinder blocks. Those cinder blocks. Well, let me show you the types of gravel I'll be using. Okay, I've got several different types of gravel here. This is, you know, pretty big. This is going to be my base layer. Then I've got about half that size. Then I've got pea size, pea gravel, and then chicken grit, which looks like very very coarse sand so i'm going to start loading that into the container and you'll see it once it's all done all right that is my first layer of two bags of large gravel so that's uh three bags of pea gravel i was going to use the crushed rock as the intermediate size but i really didn't like the consistency of it so i used only one bag of that it was kind of messy and inconsistent so it's two bags of large gravel, one bag of crushed rock, and uh, three bags of pea gravel. Now I'm going to load in the grit. Okay, that's my final layer of chicken grit coming up just below my um, back flush valve outlet, which is, of course, lower than my outlet outlet. So I'm filling it up with a garden hose. I'm just going to clean the water out, and then um, after a few hundred gallons of that, then... Uh, I'm going to let it sit and let the PVC, this is very important, you got to let the PVC glue uh, outgas for a day just so you don't introduce any toxic chemicals to your fish. Hi guys, it's a few days later and I'm, um, I've got the mechanical filter done. Now I'm working on the biological filter. I'm using this tub that my wife painted camo, I guess. It's got an outlet that goes to the UV filter. The inlet comes down from the tub and feeds the bottom here and I've taken a piece of pipe I've perforated one side on one half and the other side on the other half in the hopes of making like a vector motion I'll show you how this goes in here this will go in here glued up okay and this basket I'll cut a hole in it so it'll sit flush on top of that and then I'll pile my sponges and other bioaccumulating scraggly scraggly things in there but that's it it's very simple so I'm just going to glue that up and then go set it into place and then measure my connections. One tip when you're dealing with this uh, clear plastic tubing, it's very rigid. So what I've done is I've filled this bucket up with hot water and I'm just gonna drop this, I'm just gonna snake this in there and that'll make that plastic very pliable over time. Otherwise it's a real hassle to get it over the, uh, the nipples. That one in there too. And then I'll just give that time to uh, soften up while I finish up. Okay, so you can see the water is pretty murky. It's clearing up a little bit, um, going down into my bio filter and then my UV filter, which right now is just uh, side dumping out. I'm just dumping out into the garden, but it'll eventually come dump into this bowl and then into the koi pond. Who? Should be much happier after uh, after this filter is ready. Okay, it's been a few days. Sorry for the rain sound. Uh, it's a horrible storm coming in. Uh, the The Rubbermaid tote was leaking. It just couldn't handle the weight of the water, so I turned. I, I went to a 10 gallon 
plastic tote you see there for my uh, biological filter it's working pretty good uh, my flow rate is pretty good I've got it choked down a little bit at the inlet valve because um, that one and a half inch pipe just can't handle the full power of the 1200 gallon per hour pump so I'm probably gonna put in a bypass at some point um, but this is a huge improvement over the way it was the pond is much clearer uh, the fish are kind of chilling right now. The weather's bad and it's getting cold, so they're kind of going into their slow stage. But I'm very happy with the results and uh, look forward to seeing how the pond turns out in a few weeks. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.